Newsletter 439. Is that all really there? Yes. 439, 27, 7, 2008. 2 Corinthians 4.2 is our scripture we're zeroing in on. We have renounced the hidden things of shame, no longer walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God, Jesus, deceitfully, but by manifestation of truth, the doctrine of Christ, commending ourselves to every man and woman's conscience in the sight of God or before God, Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Now, there's a denouncing here of the hidden and shameful moving on to the no longer walking in craftiness and travelling on there neither handling the word of God step by step this is happening neither handling the word of God deceitfully but there's a separation now and then we moves on Paul says by the manifestation of the truth by the teaching of the doctrine of the Christ by the proclaiming and by the the uh, manifestation and the elaboration of the doctrine of Christ we are then able to be recommended and commended and we are able to be even praised and the other word would be uh, accepted by the Almighty God. But if we are not giving the doctrine of Christ forward slash the truth, because nothing else is, is, is going to do it. It's only the doctrine of Christ that sets us free. On application, of course. Can someone say amen? amen. Yes. So, it, it's only by applying the word of God that we are able to be accepted by the God of that doctrine. So there must be these uh, key factors dealt with. The shameful hidden things must be denounced or, or should say renounced, put away. The craftiness, other agendas, not a wholeheartedness, but a craftiness put away and handling the word of God deceitfully and we have all that today in the churches and I emphasise money mainstream and Christendom at large. It's all there and so there has to be a coming out, doesn't there? Title of the newsletter, message, ethos, with a question mark. Ethos, is it ecumenical ethos or uh, messianic ethos, ethos relating to character or even more than that, distinct character. And the distinct character of Christ is manifest and made known through his doctrine. Because Christ is not on earth in bodily form, in the flesh, the only way we can know his true character and know his way is by the doctrine of Christ. That's his way. He said, I am the way. And that can't even be known because the doctrine of Christ is in print form. 
But not even that can be known without the spirit of the distinct character of Christ. Can someone say that? Holy Spirit. So, we're moving as it is this moment far away from ecumenical ethos, aren't we? And one woman I have mentioned here on the newsletter is the executive director of the Uniting Church Schools Commission and she recently said in the June journey or the June Uniting Church Papyrus 2008, page 15, she says that she was very much inspired to observe the unity and the ecumenical ethos between the United Church and the Roman Catholic Church and I'm making reference and she's making reference to Unity College in Caloundra, Queensland. She was inspired by that. I tell you what, I was inspired when I read it, what she wrote to write this. <laughs> and that's the way it should be. A true minister should be ready to go to battle and put pen to paper and voice to public and microphone or DVD, CD, whatever you might be viewing by DVD today, World Wide Web, CD, audio format. A true minister of the Christ should be ready to go to battle, uh, whether it be polemics or uh, hermeneutics. It doesn't really matter. A true minister needs to go to battle and, as the scriptures say very clearly, contend. Contend for the faith. Not abortion. A true minister doesn't contend for abortion rights or this or that or parliament or government or, you know this right and that right. We've got no right. We've got no right. We're not even really human unless we repent. Because Jesus said they're basically dogs, aren't they? Outside the, the house. Revelation. I'm quoting the words of Jesus. I'm not quoting an ecumenical ethos here. I'm, I'm quoting the Christ character not the character of a Christendom or man ordained and constructed and buildings and religions. I'm not quoting that. I have no faith in that. I have no, I can draw no strength from that kind of carry-on. Can someone say amen? Yes. So, let's have a look at the newsletter. There's a twisting of the scriptures the Bible says here in 2 Corinthians 4 and the verses 2. Handling the word of God deceitfully has to be all put away, doesn't it? It has to be taken you can handle the word of God deceitfully but we're never going to be commended we're never going to be commended before God we're never going to be accepted or praised if you know it's, I believe it's one of the gravest sins there is and the Lord showed us how bad it was when we reflect on the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 16 where there was a church that was 
handling the word of God deceitfully, they had false teachers there. They had a, a particular teaching. It was a false teaching. It was a teaching that made Jesus wrath, the teaching of the Nicolaitans. On top of that, they were allowing a particular woman by the name of Jezebel to teach her teachings. Now, when the word Jezebel is mentioned, it's not always in relation to sexual immorality, but people in their ignorance and, 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 and dim-wittedness always think, oh, that means calling her sexually immoral. No, no. Because Jezebel wasn't just immoral, she was a liar. Yeah. She was a liar and she was a false teacher and she claimed to be a prophetess of God. Which God? I don't know. You're listening. She said she was a teacher. She said she was a prophetess. A liar. So, that's helpful to know as we go along, isn't it? So, as we partake, as we partake of the doctrine of Christ, and walk in it. We hear it and walk in it. Something very powerful happens. True unity comes about. Not by men, not by the construction of men and women and their and their, their humanistic ideas, but if we go down to the second last paragraph, which is a scripture, Colossians one twenty C Jesus the Christ made peace, true unity between all and between mankind and God through the blood of his cross. You listening? When it says here, when I say that Jesus made the peace, and the tr- he, he's already done that. He's already provided true unity and true peace and love between all. What I mean there, this is an, uh, an expounding here of the scripture Colossians one twenty C. What I'm saying here, when I say all and then I say he made peace and true unity and love basically between all and between mankind the all is all races all race all tribes and tongues and nations and then mankind I'm talking about gender male and female so much so many and so much so many squabbling and so much squabbling and if it's not that it's a pretend hypocritical love and a pretend unity orchestrated by God forsaken men and women can someone say amen but a true unity and the true peace and the true love genuine loving your neighbour as yourself not just loving your neighbour but as yourself. That comes about through partaking of the doctrine of Christ. There's only one doctrine of Christ. It's exclusive. It excludes unrepentant sinners. Unrepentant sinners can never ever taste and partake of the power of the gospel and the doctrine of Christ and the spirit of God. Never in a million years. That's why it's so grave a sin to partake and taste of his holiness and his power of his spirit and then grieve the spirit away and then go your way and depart from the living God. Hebrews 3, 12 to 15, Hebrews 10, 
verses 28 forward to 39. Can someone say amen? Yes. Yes. For they died in the Old Testament on the witness of two or more. They were, they were slaughtered. And what greater condemnation do you think they are deserving? Hebrews 10, is it 29? I'm pretty sure it is. What greater condemnation are we heading for if we grieve the Spirit away and we crucify afresh the crimes? Can someone say amen? Well, what greater condemnation can there be? Hebrews 10.29 Of how much worse punishment do you suppose and reckon will he be or she be thought worthy who have trampled the Son of God underfoot Count of the blood of the new covenant by which they were sanctified a common thing and insult the spirit of grace. Now that is straight from the canon of the Christ, can someone say amen? Paul speaking to the Hebrew saints. I was explaining to one of my blood family, as in my own relative, my, one of my sisters yesterday, and I had a meeting with a couple of my sisters, and we read from the scriptures, and I was quickened by the Spirit to point out to one of my sisters especially about that phony that imposter Pope and all Popes about this shonky priesthood that they have and how the veil was torn in two and we come to the Father in the name of Jesus, great. We went to Corinthians, Ephesians and Galatians and Thessalonians and uh, Thessalonians and uh, our Paul was writing to the saints and I said, because she has this one sister of mine has seven girls and a boy. And I said, one of them dies. This is a hypothetical. I said to her, one dies and there's still six left of the girls or still seven at large. You don't write to that one, Mary, whoever died. You don't write any letters to her because they live all around the place. And they write letters to your family members and one's dead, been buried in the grave and gone. An insane person would be writing letters and sending them to a dead person that doesn't live at that address anymore. It's like some of these insurance companies, they're a bit insane, aren't they? They keep, uh, uh, telecommunications mob, keep sending bills to some widow whose husband's been dead for five years. They still want to keep extracting money from the purse. <laughs> so anyway one dead and I said do you write letters to dead people I don't know anyone that does well Paul wasn't writing to the dead saints he wrote to living saints at Thessalonia, Ephesians so how in the world can you not be a saint until you're dead and I said can you show me where there was any Pope or even bishop or, 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 or prophet or apostle making anyone a saint? Canonising them? Not one. I said, we're canonised by the immortal seed. We're born again of God, not of man, not of the flesh. And when we're born again, not of the will of man, when we're born again, we become saints. To the saints at Colossus, to the saints at Ephesus. But yet, Australia hasn't got one yet. So there's no one born again in Australia. There's no one following Jesus at all. No priests, no bishops, no cardinals. They're all just dogs outside the house as far as the Pope's teaching goes in the Roman Catholic system, can someone say amen? You don't write letters to dead people. These were all saints. But, wait a minute, Mary McKillop, we're waiting, we're just trying to scrape up that last miracle. 
So she's got three miracles now. We will be able to canonise her as saint. What rubbish again. Because these saints at Thessalonica, these saints at Ephesus, these living saints, men and women and youth. You trying to tell me they all done three miracles? My Bible says not all have the gift of miracles. My Bible says not all have the gift of faith, but they have a measure of faith. My Bible says not all have the gift of healing. My Bible says that not all have the gift of interpretation of heavenly tongues. My Bible says not all have the gift of wisdom, but we have a degree of wisdom. All gifts are distributed and given by the will of God. The same Spirit, Holy Spirit. Can you say Amen? Well, we've sorted a bit out this morning, haven't we? We're on the right road. Just goes to show you, doesn't it? As the Scriptures say, they will travel by the droves to hell. The false teachers and the false prophets and the false leaders and the false shepherds. Apparently today you're not a pastor unless you're a businessman and you you're running a uh, 200 plus congregation and you've got a, running a, you've got a building and you own your building and you've got all the, all the trimmings of, 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 of a uh, Chinese thrift shop hanging off you all the decorations of, 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 of a um, A show bag in the plane of a, of a local ecker. Got everything. They got all the decorations. They've got everything. And, and, and when you get down to what's coming out of their mouth, it's deceitful. They've handled the, God, the Word of God deceitfully. They haven't denounced the hidden things of shame. The lying tongue is the, one of the most evil of the hidden things of shame it's so shameful to lie people don't know how shameful I'll tell you how shameful it is to lie when you go back to the garden of Eden the Eden Bible College with Mrs. Pastor E Pastor S. E and Pastor Adam and when you have a look at the damage that one lie did you know, and the shame that it brought, and the pain and the misery, the devastation, the absolute devastation. You know how bad it is. 